Welcome to Tech Blueprint, a window that lets you know the latest technology news in the world. The United States' advantage in semiconductors is undeniable. After all, it holds a first-mover advantage and possesses the most fundamental chip technologies and patents. Virtually the entire global chip industry is built on American technology, with even TSMC and ASML relying on it. Despite the continued globalization of semiconductors, with regions beginning to divide responsibilities and demonstrate their respective strengths, the United States will remain ahead in chips as long as it continues to expand its technological advantage. However, the US's insistence on imposing a blockade has proven a complete miscalculation. How can the US and the West enjoy such high welfare? It's because they hold the technological high ground, then sell to China at exorbitant prices, reaping hefty profits. Take tunnel boring machines, for example. Before China achieved its breakthrough, the price was almost outrageous. Back then, when China purchased tunnel boring machines from Germany, they charged 350 million renminbi per machine. If problems arose, they had to hire technicians to repair them, with costs starting from the technician's absence. During repairs, the operation was kept closed, fearing that China would learn from them. As a result, China spent six years developing its own domestically produced tunnel boring machines, bringing the price down to tens of millions RMB, and quickly capturing the global market. There are countless examples of this. The United States cut off space cooperation with China, but China landed on the moon and built its own space station. Europe and the United States refused to cooperate with China on navigation, but China developed its own Beidou system, a globally leading technology. The United States originally had a significant advantage in semiconductors. If they hadn't made any unnecessary complications, they could have easily reaped high profits for many years. After all, in recent years, China's by-what-you-make mentality prevailed, and its chip development was not as rapid. However, in recent years, the United States has directly interfered with the global semiconductor industry, seeking every possible means to impose blockades and restrictions on China's chip sector. The United States initially targeted individual companies and then the entire Chinese semiconductor industry, initially cutting off chip supplies to Huawei and later adding chip-related Chinese companies such as SMIC, Shanghai Microelectronics, and Yangtze Memory Technologies to the entity list. From cutting off the supply of high-end chips such as 5G to restricting cutting-edge semiconductor manufacturing equipment such as lithography machines, and later restricting EDA design software, chip manufacturing materials, advanced AI chips, and even bringing in allies such as Japan and the Netherlands to jointly implement export controls. The most obvious example is the expansion of shipment restrictions on ASML in the Netherlands, from high-end EUV to advanced immersion DUV. As a result, these series of U.S. actions not only failed to stifle China's chip industry, but instead galvanized China's resolve to break through, accelerating the pace of domestic substitution in China's chip industry and forcing China to achieve domestic production across the entire chip industry chain. The U.S. could never have imagined that China would, in just a few years, have completed the decades-long journey that took the US and Europe. 
From chip design and manufacturing to packaging and testing, equipment, and materials, China is rapidly replacing domestic production. By 2024, China's semiconductor-related patents had surpassed those of the US. Chip production capacity has also increased significantly. Previously, China relied heavily on imports, but now imports are steadily decreasing, while exports are growing rapidly. You may have noticed that before 2023, chips surpassed oil to become China's largest imported commodity, with annual chip imports exceeding $400 billion, accounting for more than half of the global total, with the majority of this coming from the US. Products like Intel and AMD CPUs, NVIDIA GPUs, and Qualcomm mobile phone socks all have significant markets in mainland China. However, since the US implemented chip restrictions, China has been forced to accelerate domestic substitution. Take SMIC, for example. In recent years, it has invested 170 billion yuan to build four wafer fabs, significantly increasing chip production capacity and rapidly increasing chip self-sufficiency. While meeting domestic demand, China has also continuously expanded chip exports. After exceeding 1 trillion yuan last year, chip exports reached 650.26 billion yuan in the first half of this year, a year-on-year -year increase of 20.3%, setting a new record. Converting the data from January to June to a daily basis, this equates to 932 million chips exported per day, or an average of 3.6 billion yuan per day. AI chips are no exception. According to the Financial Times, mainland China is accelerating wafer fab expansion, aiming to triple its total domestic AI chip production next year, with the goal of reducing its dependence on NVIDIA. It is worth noting that domestic chip substitution is being promoted from top to bottom. Relevant departments are reportedly requiring government agencies and state-owned enterprises to gradually replace Intel and AMD processors and Microsoft Windows systems to ensure the security of domestic network information. The result is that master of science is gradually becoming unnecessarily needed, resulting in losses exceeding 1 trillion US dollars. In response, some foreign media outlets have directly stated that the US chip blockade is a complete miscalculation. Bill Gates was right. The US blockade will only accelerate mainland China's chip technology breakthroughs.